Hello everyone, Penny here. Welcome to my healing garden, week one of the Meeting God in the Garden May devotional and scripture list. So today um, I, I did the introduction already for week one, day one. This is the actual topic for day, uh, for week one. We'll get into day one of the devotion. I hope that makes sense. So I don't, you know, I hope so. So if you haven't checked out the links, uh, and the albums in the group and all the posts that I've been posting all day long. Please forgive me if I get on your nerves. It's just setting this devotion up for this month. It takes a little bit of prepping time and my internet was not cooperating this morning and Facebook, of course, does not cooperate with me. So anyway, I've been a little bit delayed, but don't worry. I hope it's worth the wait. So Meeting God in the Garden scripture list looks like this, and it's in the albums, and it's posted in the Facebook group, and it's also in the PDF shared. Um, so, Healing Garden, week one is our, my healing garden. Now, let's get started. So, today's scripture is Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 12. Now, I'll be reading from King James. You can read whatever. The PDF is King James. So I'll be reading uh, from that. You can read from whatever. That's that's your all's choice. I'll just tell you what I'm reading from. So in case there's any questions about what version I'm reading from. So Jeremiah 31, 12 says, Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord for wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and of the herd and their soul shall be as a watered garden and they shall not sorrow any more at all and what comes to my mind when i'm reading this about the watered garden is when jesus was at the well and he and the lady met him there and she said those thirst you know uh to come and drink and she did and that's what reminds me of that scripture so let's get into the um the cover this is the cover page and then this is kind of like the title page so we're going to be talking about a watered garden we're going to be talking about cultivate to heal later on so i so um this i don't remember i posted what page all these is 11 through 42 i believe is where week one starts number page 11 in the pdf so week one, my healing garden, I'm going to be creating a junk journal from scratch and I'm going to be showing you how. Don't worry because all the instructions I'm going to go over and all of these supply lists and everything we will go over. It will also be posted in case you do not check out my videos. It will be posted as well in the group. And of course, this week has a coloring page, right? So day one, Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 12, we just read. My healing garden is a combination of places within my heart, where the soul, the flesh, and the spirit reside in one vessel, each one with its own space and selection of plants. The healing garden perspective in a Christian's life is needed today, not just for our spirit, but the flesh and the soul. In a world where we are constantly bombarded with stressors and distractions, it's easy to lose sight of our spiritual, mental, and physical well-being well-being sorry however by creating a healing garden within our hearts we can find a sense of peace and serenity and that can help us navigate life's challenges with greater ease a healing garden is a place of refuge where we can go to reconnect with ourselves and with god it's a place where we can find rest and renewal and where we can nourish our bodies minds and spirits by cultivating a healing garden within our hearts, we can create a space that reflects our innermost desires and aspirations. In this garden, the soul, flesh, and spirit exist in harmony, each taking its rightful place and contributing to the overall beauty and vitality of the space. The soul within its emotions and desires is represented by flowers that reflect our innermost thoughts and feelings. The flesh with its physical needs and desires is represented by plants that provide nourishment and sustenance for our bodies. And the spirit, with its connection to God and higher power, is represented by trees that reach toward the heavens, symbolizing our desire to be close to God. As we tend to our healing garden, we must also tend to our spiritual, mental, and physical health. 
We must nurture our bodies with healthy food and exercise our minds with positive thoughts and our spirits with prayer and meditation. By doing so, we, we can create a sense of balance and harmony within ourselves that will help us thrive in all areas of our lives. So let us take the time to cultivate our healing garden, to nourish our souls, minds, and bodies, and to connect with God in a deeper and more meaningful way. Let us create a space of beauty and serenity within ourselves that we sustain us through life's ups and downs and brings us closer to the peace and love of God. Healing comes when we have a contract spirit, a feeling of remorse, guilt, hurt, shame, a feeling for doing something wrong, an offense of a hurt, tragedy, life in general, along with a desire to make amends and a humble spirit. When we feel hurt, saddened, wronged, abandoned, victimized, or as an inside, innocent bystander, it can bring on a blanket of shame, a summer dusting, and even a drought that needs to be healed and nourished. It needs to be watered, showered with love from above. When I think of a healing garden, I immediately think of herbs, of course, as an herbalist. However, a garden's basic needs are water, sunlight, and soil. Although the herbs themselves contain medicinal properties that aid and support the body, it is God who ultimately heals us. In this healing garden, we must also nourish ourselves with water, cultivate, and do some spade work and be to begin the process of healing and regrowth. Okay, so I highlighted the verse and then the cross-reference. Now, I chose any color because I wanted some pink. Oh, I need a little pink today. <laughs> so, uh, I may use pink for all of this week. So, just in case you know. Um, I do have a color marking system, but just for this, I, I just kind of want to make it fun. And kind of just, you know, kind of like an emotional type. <laughs> I need pink today. <laughs> um, um, so, I did do the cross-reference and then I highlighted it. Uh, in pink on the Bible that I'm going to be using for my healing garden. Just as a, I don't know, I like to do different Bibles for different studies and things like that. So don't think you have to. That's just something I do. All right. So I am in my Bible garden, my gospel garden that's going to be coming up. Anyway, um, this is the Bible that I preach and teach out of. So this is my go-to Bible for everything. I love this Bible. Um, and anyway, um, so here I am. I've, I had actually already had marked <laughs> this uh, as well. So I wanted to get into uh, a little bit of verse mapping uh, because, um, I don't know, I just felt like it helps. It, that's how I study. And I kind of wanted to show you all how I study. So I read the devotion and there are writing pages in this um, kit in the printable uh, to write about, but when I get my junk journal going, I will write about each day, okay, and I will put in my uh, verse mapping in my junk journal, so the junk journal's coming, uh, a place to hold all of my healing garden in one place, that's what it does for you, and I'm, I have to collect things from my day, right, as well, uh, so we can put in our junk journals, and so we can create junk journals, and um, we'll get into the junk journal part coming up okay but i did post about what you need to save okay about the junk journal but i want to have fun with this so when i'm thinking about um we got into talking about the watered garden and we'll get into more you know as the days come through we'll reveal more about the devotion but to verse map there's i don't have a sheet for this i'll make a sheet i'll share you all i'll share my sheet with you guys when i'm done okay um so what I got thinking about, we're talking about the water garden and in the devotion, you know, the words that we were using. And when you verse map, you uh, concentrate just normally on one verse or two verses, not necessarily. You can read the whole chapter, pick a verse or two to verse map. So we're going to verse map our, our scripture for today, which is Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 12. And I thought about the water garden. And so what came to my mind for like Bible imagery it is a raindrop, and um, so I'm just going to freehand draw water drop, not raindrop necessarily, but a water drop, and I'll go back in and add dark, you know, color, I'll go back in and trace some things, but this is just a pencil, this is just a sketch for right now, okay, so within this, I will write my scripture, and um, I may put 
Jeremiah out here. I made this. Um, let's see. What can I do? <laughs> Sorry, guys. You have to give me a minute because I wasn't. Uh, I love verse mapping. Like I said, verse mapping, you know, you write the scripture. Then you underline certain words you want to define. And I use a color code system. Um, if I want to define a word, it's black. Uh, if I want to look up the definition, well, that's the final word, but if I want to look up cross-referencing and synonyms of that word or anonyms of that word, I will put a box around it uh, with green. So I'm just going to get my multicolored pen here and we'll go from there. It has all the colors I need. It has black, it has the green. Um, and if I want to really highlight look up a, like a uh, history of a word i'll do you know the purple and things like that uh, if a word really sticks out to me and i really want to concentrate on just one word i'll do red um that kind of thing so i, I usually write my scripture uh, and i don't know if i'm gonna have enough room but that's okay we're, we're gonna see if i have enough room in here uh so this there's different ways to to uh verse map so don't take it like this is the only way because I'll be showing you different um, ways. But I like to verse map. Uh, I'm going to write my scripture. Okay, as you can see, I kind of ran out of room, but that's totally okay because I still have enough room. Now, you can make it bigger if you want. If there's different methods of uh, verse mapping, different diagrams and things like that. So, don't think this is the only method because this is not. Now, one thing that I, I did see in here as I was uh, writing out my scripture is that um, I've seen a promise in here. And uh, I'm going to stand on this promise right so whenever i find a promise there so shall be as a watered garden it says therefore they shall come and sing in the height of zion right so that's worship right so if we worship we become a watered garden like a watered garden so together to the goodness of the lord so we're there for the lord right for wheat and for wine for oil and for the young of the flock and of the herd so i see that promise right stand on that promise so what i like to do is i like to draw um a, a box. i always like to do boxes and things like that um but for standing i like to draw a different type of box uh for it because we are standing so i guess it's more or less like uh a tag shape or i don't know or it, there we go it looks like a block right so what it is is this is the promise right it's the promise and i love to do promises and i'm going to do promise in yellow because i want um and it may not show up so we'll see so i'm going to do the promise right and the promise is that we would be like a watered garden but there was something to do with that watered garden what do we have to do it said that they they shall come and sing, right? So with our promise, come and sing, right? And that that's for the worship, right, in Zion. And it said with goodness, come and sing with goodness. So I'm standing. So this is my little standing block, and I'm standing on the top of this promise, and it would be as a watered garden, right? So what does in the height mean? So we could underline height. And when I do this, I will, the same color, I'm underline it. I will come over here and I will draw a box. Now you don't have to draw boxes, but I do. Um, so height. So I can look up height. Um, and I'm thinking about if you height, um, your portion will increase and you will grow. That's so, right. Height meaning you will grow, grow with increase 
and portion. I'm going to go with increase and portion. And shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord. So we can look at this one and we can go into more about flow together. Now this is green and I'm going to put a box around it. Can't. And on top of here I'm going to say flow together. This is where fancy writing comes in and calligraphy pens and brush pens and things like that. Um, so I'm going to say flow together. And I'm going to really think about the synonyms of flow together. Think about what exactly they are talking about. And I can put that there. I can look it up. Uh, Google it. Uh, Bible, Bible Dictionary. Strong Concordance. Goodness of the Lord for wheat and for wine, for oil and for the young of the flock. So something stuck out to me here. So I'm going to do um, blue because this is something that's sort of like a phrase or a parable or something that I need to dig deeper into, kind of read between the lines. Um, so the goodness of the Lord. So we're going to do wheat and I underline these twice, oil with blue and one and then there's more here right and we're gonna see about that you can make your boxes different sizes different shapes and things like that so this is regarding wheat wine and oil and we we know that the oil represents what the wine represents and the wheat represents so this is like a representation the blue is so there's one more thing and i'm going to put it over here um is another representation and about the young of the flock and the herd right so i'm going to draw another one and this box I go twice around to give it a border because I've underlined it twice, so I want the same over here. And then I forgot to put a box around this one. There we go. Box around the green. Let's go back to blue. So uh, something about the young and the young flock, right? And herd. So there's something about that I need to look more into, symbolism wise, representation wise. Okay, and it says, so shall be as a water garden. Um, so I know that this has to do with the soul. So there is a faith and health connection here, right? Do you see that? So the faith and health connection, uh, I can use red. That would be good for it. So the faith and health connection. So I'm going to circle soul because, and I'm going to circle the water garden, even though I've already have it over here as a promise. Um, there is a soul, there's a faith and health connection. And I would actually put that um, down here if I had room or wherever. So I don't have room to do the faith and health. So I should have put this up, but that's okay. So the faith and health connection, I am just going to come up here. Now I'm not going to box this one. I'm going to do an oval up here, right? And I just put faith and health up here because this is a connection the soul the soul to watered garden and then i will journal in here about that connection i want to make uh, a box here or i may just make a list of the cross referencing uh, sort of like a little checklist I can do that. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, and I hope you enjoyed my 
my rough draft of verse mapping. I hope that you join us for the next couple of days, for the whole month. I hope you join us and check back soon. I will go over the junk journal, what you need and what you need to start collecting. So check out that post. It's already been posted and I will go into that in another video uh, for today. I'm hoping to get done in just about in the evening. So I'll see you in the evening.